Hey, what's up? I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. And welcome to another video. And I'm gonna wing this video completely from start to finish because I'm not in the mood to edit. Sorry for all that. That's what you gotta get. Um, let's talk about game stores because we often talk about Steam. You can sell your games on Steam, but there are so many other options out there um, for PC games. Of course, console games, you only have one option and that's the market store, the place, the store from that specific console. On iOS, uh, you're pretty much locked into Apple's App Store. Changes are coming, but it's not gonna matter much to most of us. And um, on Android, you have the Google Play Store. There are other options out there, but they are, uh, well, some of them are actually good. Manufacturer based, uh, Samsung has their own store. Could be interesting. Who are, why, who are, who are, we? a couple of other manufacturers have their own store. Those could be interesting. There are a couple of locked market with a big wall around it. You only get in there if you have the contacts and things like that. So you're pretty much actually uh, locked into the Google Play Store. But for PC, there are many other options that we rarely talk about. Had some people ask about it, was currently working on getting my game in a couple of stores, figured it was the right time to talk about those things. So I'm gonna do this all without editing because I'm not in the mood to edit my video later today, except for this one thing, uh, we need an intro, so intro. So let's start with Steam because we can't actually talk about game stores without talking about Steam. It's the big, 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 big juggernaut in the room. Um, actually, it's probably the whole building and there's a tiny shed here and there. And those are the other options. Steam is just so big. And if you're going to release a game on PC, if you want to make money from it, if you want to reach an audience, Steam is your best bet. It's that simple. Um, Steam has a great system. Um, everybody uses it or most PC gamers use it. So they have their all their content and games on there in that library. Um, it has a great system for Steam keys, which uh, is lacking in many other options we're gonna talk about. So uh, pretty much Steam. If you're not on Steam with your PC game, you're missing out on an audience. Um, also, it's convenience for gamers. It does cost you $100 to get your game up there, but you get that $100 back after your first $1,000 revenue, I think, or when you breach the $1,000 revenue, Steam will pay you back that $100, something like that, um, based on the revenue share thingies. So um, it takes a 30% of your revenue share for most common developers, and that's all of us. Uh, there are some other cases here and there, but that's they were not going to be in that region or area. That's just big companies. So um, yeah, thirty percent goes to Steam. Pretty f or we're gonna. F yeah, no editing, Pascal. So keep talking. It's got to be very common that thirty percent. It's on the most App Store has it, Google Play has it, most other things have it, uh, except this tiny option we're going to talk about now after Steam. The next best thing for most indie game developers, itch.io. Um, it's not, I mean, sales wise, it's not comparable to Steam at all. But if you want your games out there, if you want to sell your games, or if you have free games that you want to get out there, itch.io is just the thing designed and developed for us indie gamers. Uh, I think I've been on there since like day one or maybe year one, probably more like that. All my games are on there. I use it often and the sales are not comparable to Steam. Um, these days there's a lot of free stuff there and a lot of uh, web playable games which makes it a very different platform than it used to be in the beginning. Um, that makes it also very hard to sell your game on there because people that browse itch.io I think are mostly in it for the free games. However, a couple of... <laughs> these things happen, normally I cut them. A couple of interesting things on itch.io. Um, their backend for organizing your game and your store page Top notch. Honestly, haven't seen anything as good as that anywhere else. Um, although fewer options than some of the other things, but getting your text on there, your YouTube trailer, your screenshots, all that stuff, um, the, the design and the look of the page, pretty smooth ex experience. Honestly, it's probably the best. I'm gonna talk about the worst in a minute, but itch.io might be the best for that. Um, also, no curation. If you want something on there, and you decide it at 10 a.m. and you want it on there at 4 p.m., that's possible. Just upload it, set it up, get your files on there, push the publish button or make it public and it will be there. There's nobody curating it. It's everything goes, uh, well, probably not everything, but 
it's not going to be curated so it's going to be on there for at least a couple of minutes before maybe somebody takes it down depending on what you're pushing up there but pretty much everything goes um i like itch.io also you can use uh, like little widgets for your website i know a lot of game developers don't have their own website if you do you can use itch.io to sell your games through your website that links to the itch.io page it's all very interesting very simple to use um percentage wise itch.io has a default percentage of 10 percent i think i'm not sure they have a default setting doesn't matter you can change that you can decide to give itch.io a bigger share you can decide to give itch.io a smaller share that's all possible and that's a pretty cool system so um there can be bundles there i've been in a couple of bundles here and there so that's all optional and um it just has a lot of features and, and it's just a pretty cool place to be for your games not for you but for your games right moving on to the next one i've been tinkering with that one recently most of my games are on there and it's the humble store most of you will probably know humble from the humble bundles they also have a store page where they sell games and they can sell your game um i wanted to put up a couple of my older games I figured ashfield was missing decided to uh, fill in the form and get it up uh, set up there because you have to fill in your game and then they will actually curate it i guess if it's okay to get on there um apparently i already did that in 2020 but the game never got approved or something i have ne never received an email about this but it was just there in limbo so uh, after just quick email back and forth within a day it was approved and ready to go i'm not sure how they curate how strict they are on things so i'm gonna try that with my upcoming games and see if i can get them through it without any problems or if they are maybe curating based on some weird quality type thing i'm not sure i'm gonna find out um the backup the back end for humble store is pretty easy um pretty much if you have the steam page already up for your game which of course doesn't mean you have if you have a steam page it's very easy because then you can just enter that steam code and they will grab a lot of information like the text screenshots things like that from your steam page and you only have to upload like one banner image and a trailer or a youtube link um, things like that very easy very simple very quick not sure what the default percentage is but it's probably 30 percent as well i like humble store because they do a lot of uh, sales so sale events summer sales spring winter all those things and you can very easily participate in those very quickly a simple form allows you to set discounts for all the games that you want to partake in this sale event very easy very simple um again sales numbers are dwarfed compared to steam it's like this is steam this tiny little hair in between my fingers that's humble store um of course this all varies a little bit depending on what type of game you have but in general it's always steam is this big and the others are very tiny that's just the, how it is but that doesn't mean you should ignore these stores for the simple fact that besides having sales on there you also get brand awareness and game awareness and people will see your game when they browse different stores they will see these banner images pop by and fly by every time and that will just trigger them it's pretty much why companies like coca-cola or mcdonald's are still marketing to us every day constantly it's not like we don't know these companies but if you stop seeing them everywhere your mind will forget them pretty much because they're very forgettable uh, and that's how it happens or that's how it works so make sure your, your game is everywhere and all the time everybody can see it and look at it and that will just trigger eventually hopefully a sale here and there so um itch.io humble store that brings me to epic game store um fairly new on the market um, there's a lot of stuff you can read up on that epic doesn't like how steam works with percentages doesn't like how apple work with percentages and all that stuff that's all pretty uh, it's a little bit fake let's not forget that epic is just as big and huge as apple and valve are in terms of money revenue and company and pretty much where their focus is it's on making money it's not on making us happy it's on making money else they wouldn't even be trying to do this so um of course they look nice now and they will try to force themselves into the market but once they're there it changes it already changed a little bit they opened up the epic store for pretty much all the games 
except you also have to pay a hundred dollar fee for the epic game store to get your games published there you get it in back in or it returns to you after a thousand dollar revenue same as steam but let's not forget steam uh, the sales on steam will go faster because everybody's there epic game store still very tiny so the uh, the chance of getting those thousand dollars revenue if your game is also on Steam, where most people will buy it, they will not buy it on the Epic Store if they already bought it on Steam. So the sales there are less and lower and the chances of you recouping is also a lot smaller. I didn't find it indie friendly at all when I was reading up on it, trying to get my games on there. If I want 10 games on there for $100 each and those games already exist on so many other stores, the chances of making sales and making back that revenue it's just very small and the, for me it's not worth it to get my games on the Epic Store. Um, extra thing that now has to be done on Epic, if your game has achievements on Steam, it also needs to implement the achievements or the system from Epic for the Epic Store. So you now have to implement their uh, achievements. And for many stuff that's not difficult, for Unity I think they have an SDK unreal obviously that's their engine and a couple of other things but for me in my case there is an option solution out there a third party solution but still it's a lot of extra work i have to do just to get my existing catalog of games on there and knowing that it's probably not gonna sell the right amount to recoup the investment i have to pay to get my games on there if you still follow my brain fart, I hope you do. Um, it's just not worth it for me. And that's um, sad because I would love to have my games on there, but I'm just not gonna pay $100 to get my every game on there. It's um, yeah, it's probably gonna be 80 euros right now. Still not worth it uh, recouping that on a game that's maybe $8. You think that sell, or no, you don't have to sell 10 copies because you have to reach to $1,000 before you get that 80 euros back. It's the math just doesn't work out for me and my games, but it might differ for you. Um, let's move on to the next door, GOG. GO stands for Gamers, Galaxy of Gamers, I think. Weird name, weird system. Um, I have Residual on there uh, pretty much because that went through the publisher at that time, Apogee, they had connections with GOG from the good old days. Sorry. And, um, yeah, I'm, I don't really like the fact that Residual is on there for the simple reason that one, uh, the store page, you can't really edit it as a developer. You have to do that by mail apparently. So right now it still shows a trailer with the Apogee logo in there, even though it's long. I have to mail somebody now. I have to figure out who and when and why and how to mail them. Then I have to make a new trailer and put in their logo at the end. I think that's a requirement. Then I have to let them update it and yeah, um, I, they also heavily curate games. I never got my own games on there. So that residual is on there now. Maybe I could now mail them and get my other games on there. Question is, is it still worth the trouble? Um, the problem right now for me is that residual is on there, but uh, there's a threshold. All these stores usually have a threshold for when they do payouts. And that's pretty good because in my case in the Netherlands, if I get a payment from America, for example, Steam, if I get a payment for like $100, I have to pay 12 euros or something to my bank. I know it's absurd. I don't make these rules. I don't have other, I have other options, but they also cost money and investment and time. And that's just a thing. So I usually have my threshold higher and on some other stores that they do it with PayPal and stuff like that. But there is always a threshold somewhere only pay out at this amount of sales. If I only have one game on there that's also already sold a lot of other copies on another platform that's bigger, I'm not gonna reach these thresholds. So residual is there. If I can, there's another sale coming for crafting and things like that, I might put it in there. But that means I'm never gonna see that money, probably not, because I'm not reaching that threshold of, I don't know what it is, but it's very a tiny chance of reaching that threshold. And I've said threshold more than enough in one video now. So um, that's another downside. I don't like the fact that you can't edit and, and do stuff on your own game store page. It's all done through emails. Uh, the curation so far has been, I'm gonna say it's shitty, crappy, terrible. Um, just me not getting my games in there. That's, yeah, I, it feels personal, but it also feels like, 
what, who, why, what, why, you know, you understand why, what's the problem? So um, just not having free access to a platform or store like that, I just don't like it. I've uh, never been a fan of them. I also don't use their tools. That might just be it. But um, I think after all these years, they are probably one of the older competitors for Steam, but they still don't have these things up and running. That kind of lets me think they are not as interested in their own platform as um, as everybody else or as some of the players. So maybe it's just not as interesting for me either. I don't know. Not a fan of it. Um, that leaves me with two other options I can think of, and there are probably more. Um, also, by the way, GOG is the, the worst of the platforms for me personally. Moving on. Mac App Store. If you're releasing on the Mac, Apple has its own App Store where people can buy software like iTunes, but for Mac. You can get your game on there. Uh, problem here is, of course, it's Apple. And pretty much if you do anything for Apple or on Apple's device or with Apple's device or whatever, it's going to cost you somewhere, somehow. And for Apple, Macintosh, Macintosh, that's very, I'm very old now. For MacBooks and other, um, for MacBooks, yeah, I'm not going to edit this video. This is terrible. For MacBooks, um, you, I'm not even sure what I'm going to say. What, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, you need to um, notarize them notarize them yeah that just means pay apple and they will give you a certificate and that makes it an official piece of software that doesn't really does much else besides make sure it runs and that's about it it's honestly it's apple i'm gonna leave it at that it's apple it's gonna cost you to get games on there i think i had a couple of games on there but yeah never been that interesting um, still, there are a lot of Mac users that will actually look at the blah, 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 at the Mac Apple Store OS thingy instead of Steam. So it might be interesting, but on the other hand, and I'm going to insult so many people now, but you all know this already. The Mac gamers is like a tiny, less than 1% of your audience. Sorry, Mac people, you're just not that important as you think you are. Um, I have a MacBook. I know what it's it, what it's like, but I've moved on to Windows. Um, Mac gamers are just very tiny in existence. You can actually look up at uh, look these stats up. Look these look up at these stats. Look up to these stats are available on Steam, and you can see uh, the amount of people having Windows, and then the amount of people having Linux, and then the amount or the two people having Mac. It's just tiny. Uh, I can release my games pretty easily on Mac, so I still do that, but it's not for a big audience or anything. It's it's literally for maybe a handful of people. So Mac Store is there if you're interested in the Mac audience, the two people, uh, but otherwise it's probably not interesting. That of course brings us to Windows. Uh, Microsoft also has a Windows Store. And honestly, I now have my Windows laptop since 2019. I don't think I ever opened it up. I've never been on the Windows Store. Uh, that probably also tells you uh, how many games I have on the Windows Store. Exactly zero um, amount of times I opened it up is the same amount as the amount of games. So I'm not really sure what it does. Honestly, if anybody has experience with that, let me know in the comments below. I might actually just look into it and see if I can upload my builds and if I need to do st special stuff or not and see how that works out because why not um, that's at least another option out there um, now i think the mac store and the windows store are mostly interesting if you have some sort of casual game like a card game or something or bubble shooters or jewel dropping match three type thingies that might actually be a very interesting market or store to look in because a lot of those type of gamers will either play through their browser on the internet or look at the software they have on their PC already. They will not be installing Steam or register or log in to Steam and figure out in between all the first person shooters if there's something they like. They are a different type of audience, so that might actually be very interesting. Um, that goes for all the markets. Um, look at the type of games that are on there and see if maybe it's a niche market that your game could fit in very well. And who knows? I have no idea where I was going with this sentence, but who knows? That's pretty much the conclusion of this video. Who knows? I certainly don't, although I do like I... Yeah, 
Um, now, there are probably a lot more stores out there that I'm not even aware of. There are, of course, also websites like uh, they just sell software. Those are out there as well. The problem is with all these stores and places and websites that you also need to collect your money from them. It's not like they are a big uh, company like Steam or Valve. Uh, they are often just tiny websites still selling software the old fashioned way before Steam. So they're like 20, 30 years old and sometimes those websites actually look like they are 20 or 30 years old. In those cases, maybe you want to stay away from them, but you could try those websites as well. Um, it will depend on your type of games. And of course there are, if you're creating a web playable games, HTML games or whatever, many out, outlets, sites, websites, out, outlet websites, many websites and options available for you for those type of games that aren't even, I don't consider them stores because they often allow you to play games with advertising and that's how they make revenue. But they are very interesting if your game is playable on the web, pretty much. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. And I'm very happy that I think uh, it was a very uh, manageable without editing this video. I hope that saved me a lot of time and I can get back into working on my game. So um, yeah, that's it for this week's video. I think, I guess I have, I wanted to talk about these stores. I don't think I forgot any of the ones. I mentioned the big ones. I think there is still a Fnatic is thing, I think a store I'm not sure if they are actually a store or more a reseller. Um, also be wary of certain websites that will act like a store, but they pretty much are reselling Steam keys. It's a gray area here and there. Um, so these are the big ones, the big companies that have been around for a longer time. Uh, that are very interesting. Um, also another question from the Discord that fits in with this as well from Windows Vista, I think. Uh, I had gone to Power, the demo version uploaded to itch.io last week. It got a little feature on the front page. Um, and the cool thing about itch.io, and I forgot to mention this, the demo is free, obviously, but still I had a couple of people tip me to dollars per download. Now, tipping is an option on itch.io. No other store has it, I think. Uh, it allows people that are a fan of you uh, to tip you a little bit extra, to up increase the price. Actually, you can set a base or a lowest bottom price and they can actually up that price when they are paying and checking out the game. So a um, very interesting thing that happens there. Uh, so I actually already made some money on Gaunt of Power without the game being released. Thanks for those people that did that. Uh, pretty interesting. It uh, doesn't do a lot, although I did gain wishlist from it, which was the main goal. But yeah, like I said, mileage on itch.io varies a lot. It will also depend on which day you upload something that goes for all the stores and how crowded is it at that point. And you just have to try as many stores as possible for the cheapest possible solution. So uh, that removes Epic Games from the, pretty much from the lineup and that leaf Steam because that's the most important one. Everything else is optional, could be interesting. So try it if you have released the game. Um, I think that's all. Did I mention, yeah, that for me it works if, I think. This is gonna be the end of it and then I'll wrap it up. One more thing, and I think I mentioned it in the GOG version, Gears of Ga Galaxy of Gamers. Uh, for me, it's only interesting, these stores, if I have a package of games on there because of that, I'm gonna say again, threshold. To reach that, I just need all my games on there. And that's pretty much why all these stores are interesting, only if you have more games on there. So the more games you have, the more interesting it becomes to check out the various stores and options to sell your game. All right, that's it. I want to thank you for watching this rumbling, chaotic video. And I will see you, hopefully, if you're still there, to tune in next week for next week's video. All right, like, subscribe, comment below. Bye.